There it is, folks. Purified caffeine crystals extracted from green coffee beans with supercritical CO2. Finally, success. Originally, I tried doing this uh, with a paintball, a high pressure paintball uh, supply canister, and I kind of packed some dry ice with coffee beans in there, and that, that really didn't work at all because I didn't have enough control over the conditions inside the canister. So this time I decided to modify my supercritical drying chamber that I built for aerogel production. So I got a, a few more pipe fittings, uh, a cap. These are all Schedule 80 uh, steel pipe fittings. And I drilled a hole in it and uh, tapped the hole and uh, got some high, high density Teflon tape. So McMaster calls this military grade as opposed to commercial grade. And not only is the tape thicker, but it's also uh, more dense. And so when sealing those large two inch pipe fittings, uh, I found that the higher density uh, Teflon tape really, really works a whole lot better. Uh, so definitely get that, and it's only an extra dollar or two for the, the military grade roll. Um, so I started assembling the chamber. It's basically built similarly to the original supercritical drying chamber, but it has an extra six inch pipe nipple on the top and bottom side of the T so that the whole chamber is, you know, about 18 inches long or so. And my plan was to put some water in the bottom of it and then put the coffee beans above it. So what I did was I, you know, assembled the chamber and held it vertically. And then I machined a aluminum disc and drilled a bunch of holes in the disc so that it would sit down into the uh, chamber, but it, was, it would be supported by the lower pipe nipple. So, uh, basically, the coffee beans couldn't fall through the screen, which is supported by this aluminum disc, and uh, the water would stay separate down in the bottom of the chamber there. So I measured out about 200 milliliters of water and poured that into the chamber, and then I set about preparing the coffee beans. So most, most of the, um, the patents that I read, which is where I got most of the information about this process, uh, stated that the coffee beans had to be uh, moisturized uh, before extracting the caffeine from them. And I guess the reason for this is that the supercritical CO2 doesn't penetrate as well if the beans are dried. So these, these green coffee beans that I bought from the store come in a, like a foil bag. And I'm, I'm not sure what the moisture content is, but it's pretty low. I mean, they're, they're very dry. So the patents uh, suggested rec, you know, moisturizing them with steam or hot water. And, and the process kind of varied from patent to patent, but I basically steamed these for about 10 minutes um, in a kitchen like steamer, like they were held above the water so that just the steam contacted them. And then I actually dumped them into the water and soaked up about about a cup and a half of hot water for the whole pound of green coffee beans. And so the idea is that uh, the swollen, you know, the, the softer coffee beans will be easier for the, the supercritical CO2 to penetrate and actually pull out the caffeine. So I, I built the rest of the chamber and loaded up those, those uh, soaked green coffee beans. They really soaked up all the water too. There was no residual water left in the pan. Uh, so there was nothing to, to worry about, you know, losing any caffeine in that regard. Um, put the top, so I, I couldn't fit the whole pound in, unfortunately, either. I only got about three quarters of a pound. Uh, frustratingly, I measured the chamber with the dry coffee beans, with the dry green coffee beans, and it held the whole pound just fine. And then when I, you know, soaked them in water, they swole up quite a bit, and I couldn't fit the whole pound in the chamber anymore with the, with the water compartment at the bottom. So anyway, so I got about three quarters of a pound in there and got the cap on. And my plan was to have two fittings at the top, you know, an inlet and an outlet, like I did for the supercritical drying chamber, so that I could connect the inlet to my siphon tube CO2 tank, and then open the outlet valve a little bit, and the liquid would sort of fall into the chamber and a little bit of CO2 gas would come out, but I could overall transfer liquid from the cylinder into the chamber by letting the CO2 gas out. Uh, but apparently this doesn't work quite so well when the chamber is packed full of green coffee beans. And so when I was opening the valve, I was just getting, you know, basically a spray of, of rapidly boiling uh, CO2 out of it. So what I ended up doing was just closing all the valves, well, closing the outlet valve and the drain valve at the bottom and just heating up the supply cylinder um, gently. And that actually worked pretty well. So when the temperature in the supply cylinder rises, its, it's, temp or its pressure increases, but the chamber pressure does not. So there's a, a, a pressure gradient and liquid is transferred from the cylinder to the chamber. 
So I filled it up about about what I considered half full. I kept the uh, the glass, um, the sight glass in the T so that I could see the level of CO2. So as I was filling it up, I could actually watch the level of CO2 rising um, and, and figured that was about half full of, of, CO, of liquid CO2. So after I had that, I closed off all the valves and then started heating the chamber up. Um, and I have a gauge on it so that I could see uh, what the pressure was in the, in the chamber. That was actually an addition that wasn't there on the drying chamber that should have had a, a gauge. Um, anyway, and so that worked pretty well. I was able to make the CO2 go super critical uh, just with, with heating it with a torch. And then most of the patents call for a, uh, like a, a soak time of around eight hours or something like that. And most of them call for even higher pressures than I was able to, to go. I, I actually went over the um, working pressure limit of that site class. Uh, I won't tell you by how much, but uh, yeah, it went over a bit. Uh, so I was very careful and nervous about being around this chamber when it was under such a high pressure. Um, what I ended up doing was wrapping the chamber with a, uh, an electric heating element and then wrapping the chamber in some fiberglass insulation and left it overnight uh, with, the, with the electric heater running. And that worked pretty well. I could even vary the temperature by kind of opening and closing the, uh, the fiberglass mat on it to let more or less uh, ambient air in. And, that, and like I say, that worked pretty well. So it maintained a temperature of about 50 or 60 degrees C uh, at a pressure of, you know, two or 3,000 or even a little over 3,000 or something. And most of the patents call for slightly higher temperatures and pressures, but, um, you know, this, this was about as much as I was comfortable with. So the next day, I uh, opened the drain valve and started extracting, you know, after cooling the chamber down, and started extracting the water, which to my surprise was completely black. I mean, it was like India ink black. I had no idea what was going on here, but I recovered most of the water, except for this, you know, <laughs> after draining the thing of water, the CO2 starts coming out, of course, and the CO2 freezes into dry ice in the exit valve, and, you know, suddenly a chunk flies out and there's there's like a sudden depressurization it doesn't come out in a smooth stream it comes out in fits and starts and uh, eventually it blew a, a big blast of co2 and splattered the, the, the india ink water everywhere which explains my uh, stained hands and fiberglass here uh, anyway it didn't lose too much so i i took my uh, india ink water there and of course i had to taste it and it's it's actually kind of Vaguely similar to coffee, uh, it tastes, uh, you know, fresher, uh, greener than, than coffee. Like it has a much more of a, an herbal or, or planty kind of taste to it. Uh, but I suspected that this was very caffeinated water. And as it turns out, it most definitely is caffeinated water. It's um, quite caffeinated. In fact, just by letting it sit for a while, I was able to see caffeine crystals in the water uh, by cooling it down. So I tried putting it in an ice bath figuring that I could uh, filter it just to get the caffeine cr crystals out. Uh, but there are so many impurities in this water that I ended up resorting to a hydrocarbon extraction. And so I'm going to make a, another video about extracting caffeine from this liquid because it did end up requiring uh, another solvent, which I was trying to avoid. I, I think in the future I may try some other techniques to, to use just water. One of the goals for this project was to see if I could actually go all the way from green coffee to caffeine with just supercritical CO2 and water, which didn't happen in this experiment. Like I say, I, I re required methylene chloride to actually get the caffeine out of the aqueous solution. Uh, but anyway, that'll be a future video. So this process is pretty similar to what happens in industrial decaffeination plants, uh, with the, the difference is that um, to actually decaffeinate the green coffee beans, the, the CO2 has to be pumped through the bed of coffee beans and then washed of the caffeine so that relatively caffeine-free CO2 is introduced back into the bed again. And in my case, what's happening is the caffeine leaches out of the coffee beans into the supercritical CO2 and then into the water. And so there's no, um, there's no constant gradient to keep lowering the value of CO2 or of caffeine in the coffee beans. Uh, it's just sort of all one you know, concentration level. So I'm sure there's quite a bit of caffeine remaining in the green coffee beans. Uh, the purpose of this experiment was just to see if I could get the transfer uh, through the supercritical phase into the water. And that definitely worked. So I'm pretty psyched about that. 
like I say, next video will be uh, caffeine extraction with uh, the methylene chloride, which is pretty cool too. Okay, see you next time. Bye.